what I realized is I was gigging and touring for maybe close to about 8 to 10 years. No rest whatsoever. Mimi niko tu. I'm just up and down, up and down. It took a toll on me. Yeah. It was a gig, one gig to another. I land here, I get up, I go. And no time to stop and smell the flowers. Mm -hmm. Like I said, self-care was a rumor. So now that takes a toll on you at some point. Mm -hmm. How do you walk away at your best moments now? How people would perceive it mm -hmm. during your glorious moments and then you decide I'm out? I'm very black and white. I don't know gray. So <laughs> because of that, there's no way I could have one foot in and one foot out. I wanted more of God and I could see um, in my personal walk, how that was deteriorating and what it was doing to me. And if I had not checked out at the time I checked out, it was not going to be good. But were you looking for a bad boy though? Were you really looking for a bad boy at no. that age? didn't want my family to be in public at all. Number two, my husband is not a public figure. I always say, you know, we're good. We're, we're happy in our space. One of us is in the limelight, the other one is not. And that's just how we are. Mm -hmm. For my son, no. Me found my peace, I found my joy in, in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for God. I really don't know. Yeah, because I could see myself slowly slipping into depression. A uh, very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS Rebuilding Restoration Series. My name is Lynn Googie. I'm loving these episodes. I get to sit with women who actually paved the way for majority of us. I was just having a conversation with Esther Wahomi and she mentioned something important. Sometimes when you are a pioneer, you are going to take a lot of punches and then you will have people like now me who get to enjoy the journey you walked. And sometimes I look at the women I bring on the show and I wonder what was life like for them even during their times in the limelight. And sometimes the reason why I'm so cautious when I'm doing this show is because I've seen them stand and say there are moments I did this and I did not even like it. I could not even watch myself. And I was listening to my guest because majority of us know her for her secular music. And she was there and we used to look up to her and we were like, oh my God, go Amani. But then to hear later on their instant where she would look back and be like, now nah, this is not who I want to be. There's a better version of myself and I'm going out there to get it. And I asked her, what's the take home? What would you want people to learn from your story? And she said one beautiful thing. I almost did a mic drop. She said, Lynn, prayer changes things and seasons belong to God. That's very impactful. I'm about to let her introduce herself so that she can take us to her journey of self-awareness. And at what point did it get to her? She said, you know what? I've lived this life, but I want a better, wiser life for myself. But before that, of course, I have to say thank you so much to my people at Kings Developers Limited for always coming through and partnering with us on this conversation. Production series so when you see people walking the journey with you, you have to be so, like I'm so grateful, but I said one thing, I'm never bringing just anyone to sponsor our shows. It's because the people we talk to, the people we collab with, we've done a lot of due diligence. So if you're looking into owning a home, an apartment, no matter the budget, why don't you try my people at Kings Developers Limited, very ISO certified, and they have their offices at Prism Towers, that beautiful building that will belongs to them, walk on fifth floor and ask them kings mukonanini and always share your feedback with me no matter what. And also to say thank you to the amazing team that gets to put all this work together. Sira Hisi, so scholar Muga and the entire management at LNN Asantenisana and also to you guys for being active participants of our work. You watch the shows, you leave us feedback, you tell us what has inspired you, you offer positive criticism and I always say this journey would not have been beautiful without you in it. So when I see 
see you guys watching our content it makes me happy so asanteni sana and now without further ado please allow me to let this beautiful guest introduce herself hi hi how are you i'm very well thank you to check even you look una check up before because when ni kani metense up Hi. I'm good now. How are you? I'm very well. How are you feeling? I feel good. Thank you for mm-hmm. my flowers. You're Why welcome. are they not here? I see, <laughs> I see it every time people show up with flowers, I'm gonna put them here. But thank you so much Amen. for that. I'm giving you your flowers cuz uh, I have been such a fan from Izo days that Tuko. I was a fan and I'm still a fan. Mm-hmm. I binge watch you. Mm-hmm. Yes. A lot. A lot a lot to an extent that um even my phone knows yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a new episode okay yeah. lena has posted a new episode mm. do i want to watch this yeah. Save for later yes yes so let me tell you so one day we were i think in, it was in london we met this man no here in kenya kafo yeah. we met this man and he said hi and he said lin wewe unajua you are the reason si onangi tv yangu anymore i'm like <laughs> my wife is always lin 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 like, yes. like it's humbling you know it is amazing yes. and there's always something to learn from each of your episodes mm-hmm. which is really good yeah. so there's always you just don't watch and Um there's some things you can watch online that leave you like eh hey. yes but there's always something good mm-hmm. to take back I appreciate I that. that you know yeah. areas of improvement though where should we improve on Hakuna Sawa uko ni Hakuna hakuna unaona vile set imeiva vizuri as in hakuna like I used to watch you from Tuko those days like even before people yeah. had discovered mm-hmm. you and everything yes. I literally used to go like what is they have not posted one for Lean <laughs> you know I'm one of those guys like I hope they post one next week and yeah. I'm like okay fine so when the top when your episodes used to come up I'm like yeah mm-hmm. they're beginning to see that this one is the one who <laughs> yes yes I appreciate that thank yeah. you so much but oh wait a minute I I know you <laughs> of course I'm acting like we just you know catching up for yes. coffee but maybe for the people who are watching you for the very first time could you please introduce yourself Hi my name is Cecilia Werimo better known as Amani I am a born again Christian I love Jesus he's a love of my life and I am a wife and a mom and an entrepreneur yeah yeah karibu sana thank you thank you you know and you are saying uh, uh, when you said you used to watch me f- uh, when i was at tuko to the transition something just clicked in my mind i was mm-hmm. like it was not easy even <laughs> it wasn't easy there's always the doubt yes. there's always the fear and there's always that will my people even still watch my content in a different platform for you have you ever had moments where you are like nah this is it I got to leave this and I have to go on to a next, you know, another yes. chapter of my life. Has there been those moments for yes. you? Yes. <laughs> There was um I think the most defining moment for me was when I decided not to not to be actively in music anymore. To stop being a secular artist. And I remember it was not an easy decision for me to make. I knew I had to to change. Like it was something You know when they say that um was it Jonah who battled with God I never yes. battled I negotiated <laughs> I was like Lord you know I I could still I could still you know serve you but still keep the music mm-hmm. and with time God is looking at me like eh my dear time out time out it is time it yeah. is time now mm-hmm. and my biggest problem not actually problem my biggest dilemma was the fact that music for me was my bread and butter i earn money from music so it's not like normally when you get born again and you still go up and you know you still shop at the office the yes. next day and you sit down and um you continue with your work so yes your spiritual life has changed mm-hmm. but it hasn't affected your bread and butter for me i knew that the minute i decide to get born again sifik stage tena that is over and done with yes. and no more shows which means you mm. katika so how am i going to earn so i remember then i kept asking god i'm like what will i do how am i going to eat how am i going to pay rent so i postponed it and the interesting is thing is the more i postponed it the more um i was unhappy like the more i postponed it the more i got unhappy and more unhappy and I just had asking myself where did it where did it stop being 
that passion because I was passionate about music. I got into music because I was passionate about it. Um, I had the opportunity to to work, but I chose music over it. I actually, at that point in time when I was choosing music over work, um, I was at Scanad. And people don't know this about me, but yes. I once upon a time was a copywriter. Wow. And I was trained by Tony Njuguna. Wow. So I remember, you know, there was an opportunity coming up for me now to, you know, join them permanently. And I had to choose that between that and releasing Bad Boy. And I was like, do I, do I, do I? And I just woke up one morning and I was like, let me give this music thing a try. You know, one more time, let me release this song. If it works out, I stick to music. Yes. If it doesn't work out, I'll come back. Mm. I'll continue with the copywriting. Mm -hmm. And it worked out. Yeah. Yes. And there you were. And there was. And from there, it just continued. It like just snowballed. It D just you continued. just dived deeper. I dived deeper and deeper and deeper. And it just snowballed into mm -hmm. something else. And um, I was passionate about it. Then at some point, I had said that I would exit. And um, I always knew that there was a calling on my life because of my mom. My mom always told me, you're supposed to be doing gospel. So regardless of what I used to, I'm like, mom, I want this. And she's mm. like, that's good. And she's like, can you imagine if you're doing it for the Lord? So she's always reminding me, like, I'll go do things. I'm like, ah. I just got booked for a tour and I don't know where. She's like, that's great. But imagine if you're going to preach the gospel there. Wow. I'm like, okay. Okay. So she constantly reminded me mm -hmm. that this would be better in the Lord. Yeah. And even for me, as time went by, yes, there was a passion, but it started becoming more of work. Like I didn't, I was not involved in the process. Going to the studio, there was a time it was exciting. That excitement went away. It was work. Like, okay, how many songs am I releasing this year? How many have I done? How many do I need to do? How many videos am I doing? I was basically very technical. Passion had disappeared completely. It was not part of the formula. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same happened when I was going on stage. Like, I'll, initially, when I get booked for concerts, I used to be excited. Like, I couldn't sleep for a few days. Like, I'm excited. I'm like, oh, I'm having a show on this particular mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. I'll rehearse. I'll be excited. Then it got to a point. I'm like, okay, fine. This weekend, I'm doing this on Friday. I'm doing this on Saturday. I'm doing this on Sunday. It was yeah. just work. Damn. Because I wanted to eat. Yes. Yeah. God, it's but, funny because we touched on that. Yes. How, just before. Just before we started, mm, how the fear of rent. Of rent and food. And food can cripple can you. Cripple you. So I was crippled and I just, it, it got to a point, you know, I'm almost going on stage and I'm going through the set in my mind and I'm like, wow. I could hear, I'm on stage singing, people are singing the songs and to me, it's for real. I'm not, I'm not involved. I'm thinking, how many more songs do I have to go so I can go home? Mm -hmm. And worse off towards when I finally said I'm not doing this anymore. I remember one instance when I was in, I think it was in Akuru, and I was backstage. And this one was quite interesting because for the longest time, most of the time, I used to perform in clubs, I used to perform at concerts, and just like any other concert, there's a heavy smell of alcohol and cigarettes. That's kind of standard. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was backstage at this particular club, I could smell the alcohol and the smoke. Initially, it didn't bother me, but that particular day, I was repulsed. And it kept repulsing me. Even when I'm on stage, I'm like, is it me? Is it this place? So now it was switching to, I'm, I'm not comfortable here. I don't want to be here mm. anymore. So yeah, and that continued for a while. But my question, I always used to ask God, I'm like, what am I supposed to do now? How will I eat? How will I pay rent? I have commitments. I have an image. Yeah, I have an image. And you see, even that thing of image, um, you know, I talked to a few friends and they're like, don't do it. Like straight up, do not do it. In fact, I remember uh, someone close just told me, like you've built this career for close to, then it was maybe like about 10 years, 10, 12 years. Yes. Like you've built this thing for 12 years. You're literally going to walk away and start afresh because there's no way you can translate it. 
you're literally saying this is what I have built for 12 years and bye I've gone somewhere else and she was like just know that wow just be aware of that that yeah. you're walking away from something you've built for 12 years yeah so now you see those things they make you scared mm -hmm. um you go to bed you can't sleep because you're wondering okay how will I eat I'm going to start from scratch what am I starting from scratch with you know wasn't easy mm -hmm. yeah T -t talk to me about fear because that's like a, a similar struggle yes i said in places i shouldn't have for so long but then it's like you don't know it's like you're just craving for survival where, where does because sometimes i wonder if god says i'll take care of you yes how come we still don't trust him enough mm -hmm. to cater for our rent and food there's that word that has been spoken upon you mm. i will take care of you be mm. still and yes. no, I'm yes. God, you know. Yes. But then manna stopped falling from heaven, right? Mm -hmm. So now you ask yourself, how can I be still and I still need to survive? Mm. And right now, when you look back, mm -hmm. has our interpretation of survival been Hatuelevi? Hatuelevi, that's for sure. Um, I remember during that time, I started reading a lot. I read. Another thing, my mom. <laughs> God bless my mom. Like, my mom has taught me things that I'm applying now in parenting. And I'm like, whoa, as I'm doing them, I'm like, how did she put up with me for that long? Like, I literally rejected what she was telling me for a very long time. But she kept giving me books. Like, she'd see me, like, on my birthday. She's like, um, I got your book. Yes. She has books, like, in her room. And she's like, where are you? Go read this. And I'll be like, yeah, yeah. And I'm seeing them like, yeah, vision and purpose in Christ. Thank you very much, mommy. Boop. I put it in a drawer. <laughs> Next time, she will still bring me a book. She will still go get a book somewhere and give it to me. So I found myself reading those books. At my very lowest point in life, I was reading those books. And some of those books, I remember I was crying because I'm telling God, why? Why do I have to go through this? Why do I have to go to a place where I'll be stripped of everything? I don't like it. Why? Why must it be me? You know, and I just couldn't understand it. And I even remember at one point in time, I asked God, I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask for this. So why do I have to do it? Mm. And um, I'm going to get a bit spiritual. It's okay. But he reminded me. He reminded me exactly where and exactly when and how I asked for it. I got born again when I was young. My mom used to take me to uh, concerts, teen camps. And one of the camps that I went for on Jogo Road was um, by um, evangelist Teresia Wairimo. Oh. And she asked after the entire camp, she's like, who would like to receive what I have? See, that time a whole week. Pa! She said, are you sure? Both hands. Mimi Ninani, two. <laughs> I didn't know. Yes. So now um God reminded me, told me, we well, nakumbuka, ulikuwa teens camp now. Reverend Teresia Wairimo asked, who wants? And I asked. I was like, yes, I want to serve you, Lord. And mm. I raised both hands, not even one. Because she asked us to raise two. Me, I raised two. And I was confident. I was like, Lord, me, I'll serve you. So from then on, God just asked me, do you still want it? Because, you know, he can't force anything on you. And I said, yes. Yeah. But I knew what it would take. Mm -hmm. And one of the lessons I learned, one, seasons belong to God. That some, you can go through something, but understand that it's a season. What is God teaching you in that season? And later on, in the middle of that season, what I learned is I had to learn to depend on God. My provision is God. It is not man. It is not the connections I have. It is not what I have built. My provider is God. And to get to that point where I'm not relying on self, music makes you rely it makes you focus on self mm -hmm. as a singer doing secular music and even sometimes gospel you can begin to be very self-focused i i i what am i i going it becomes very much you and i had to let go of that thing of lord take the will mm. was it easy hey no it was hard it was so hard and um i could literally 
because you see you, your shows have stopped yeah your show have stopped i've gone i've told the yes. record company i'm signed to i'm stopping i'm done and they're like okay and even after i told them i'm done i still went back and did a few secular songs yes. And of course God is looking at me like oh you know like you uh, and I'm late too. And I'm late too. <laughs> you know God is very patient with us. And um after I did those songs I still I still didn't feel right. You know I was thinking deeper and deeper into being unhappy, deeper and deeper. Till I said sawa. You know what? Let's do it. There was an inward peace that came when I got born again. I felt like a heavy load had been taken off my back. I went back to the place of just enjoying worshiping God because that's where I came from. I came from a background of being in a gospel a cappella group and we used to literally sing for fun. Like just get together and just yes. sing. You know, and I loved that atmosphere. I loved it so much. So mm. I went back to that. Wow, it's funny. Not funny, but it's amazing I get to interview different generations of women in the same industry. So I'm sitting here with Esther Home and she says the reason majority of them would even fill up stadiums even though it was during the analog stage yes. it's because they got into it without knowing the money or the good things that would yes. come out yes. of it, right? Yes. For you when you got into secular mm -hmm. as much as you love music was it also more about this fame this money these deals what was it like there was you? no <laughs> as in people were looking at you like okay music yeah hmm, all right no me atakazi yes and someone is offering you a job and you've decided mm. it's music you're going yes. to do but there was passion i was so passionate about the music and i saw um what the industry has evolved to become today i think at that point in time most of us could see it we could see the vision of a place that would come where african music would be the new frontier and being at the forefront of that then you reap the fruits of that yes. and we thought we were almost there only to realize hey, hey, hey it's going to take a few more years mm -hmm. but yes you know you could see it you could see that most other places in the world you know the music had already matured but in in africa it hadn't quite gotten there and the beauty of it i was also having a conversation with uh, lady jd yes. and we were saying wow thank god we did our music back then because it was easy for it to go across nations it was easy for you to release a song in kenya and you'd find that uh, somebody else across in west yeah. africa knows your song yeah. uh reason being it was easy to market it then you didn't need a lot of money today if you want even if you release a song at aqua youtube yes technology is there but for you to be able to push it to that audience in a different geographical place it's take a lot it takes a lot it takes money sometimes it will yeah. take you traveling there mm -hmm. and pushing cuz now the market is flooded mm -hmm. then the market wasn't flooded yeah. but it was passion purely passion yes. nothing else you're just excited mm -hmm. to be on stage and doing music okay yeah. so you're telling me when you are releasing bad boy with the goat himself Nashinsky yes. you, you are releasing bad boy right you are battling with your conscience yes. you're already battling should i should i not mm -hmm. and then it comes out it's such a hit yes. when you are watching oh amani why jesus christ you know you made me go look for like a black skirt eh? <laughs> hey, hey. me have shown my mom things so <laughs> now me i'm speaking from an you audience know, perspective <laughs> I'm speaking from an audience perspective. Mm -hmm. You're there, you are rocking it, you know, you look amazing. So for me, watching mm -hmm. from this side, I want to be like you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or I'm inspired, like I'm even like ako ka skirt nini let me go get. But yes. you're telling me for you now when you are watching it, there is no satisfaction that's coming from watching all that glory. When I was doing bad boy, yeah. Um there was a satisfaction of the audience i felt like oh it has started yes. like you know it's beginning to happen and do you remember that was not the first song i released yeah. what actually excuse me launched me into the industry was a song with nameless yes and that happened and then there was a slump yeah. until in karudi mean kuna fanya job i was comfortable i was working in an office and um now when i was releasing bad boy i was like is this going to work is it not going to work yeah um the producers were confident they're like ah, it's a pain yeah i'm like hmm. 
from my experience kuna vitu mnasemanga zitafanya sometimes na unaenda yes. unaenda kwa soko and the thing just slumps mm-hmm. so i started working and i thought to myself fine so now let's work by then it had not it never quite hit me i'll be very honest with you because yeah. i always felt like i needed to do more like okay fine bad boys out what's following it up um which territories do i want to conquer which places do i w- i was very strategic with what i was doing mm-hmm. i just wanted to keep inching in into more territories yeah. like okay fine bad boy will solidify me in kenya and everything as an artist hopefully ugandans like it they liked it hopefully tanzanians like it they, they loved like. it i'm like fantastic what do i follow up with it to enforce like you know mm. to solidify my presence within the region so it was very strategic yeah there's okay. always a market to conquer yeah yes All, mark that point always a market to yes. conquer get back to that yeah. but how was it like the working with nyashinsky fun He's I good. loved it. Yeah. We um I always say artists are very interesting people. There's always that person who gets you in form of like in terms of your art. Yes. You'll always find I call it like an artsy partner. Yeah. The person who just gets you. Like if you're writing a song they'll be like, "Hey, but that's nice." It's, we do like this. So I found myself when I was writing for my album, I was really bouncing off ideas from Kolo and Nyashinsky. Yes. So Nyash should be there. He's like a pana. Yo kitu we remove weka vasi vi. So <laughs> it's I'm like sour. So when I did um when I wrote Bad Boy, yeah. I struggled with the chorus and everything. I really struggled. I'm like what is going to be? What's the chorus going to be? So I used to go and I'm like this is the chorus. They're like, "Hey, you're kitu easy." So one day when I was having a meeting in the studio because obviously my chorus was not working. Yes. Um Nyash comes in. And he looks is like, "Okay, fine. You're having a meeting because you don't have a good chorus. Mm-hmm. That is yours. Deal with it." Yeah. And he goes into studio and sort of i don't know what he was doing in the studio i can't remember and as we're there um the person i was with francis yes. of ogopa yeah. and he was like why don't you ask nyash to just sing because you could tell chica struggled with this thing so nyash was like okay let me listen so he had the song he was like hey wait a minute poor mm. i was like yeah is good for us perhaps yes. right now yes. so we can get off the hook as you can see i'm not off the hook in right regards to that then. song right there and then when it was played the second time the first words that came from his mouth were the chorus i do my friend una kapea mimi una napenda una kapea mimi ndio nilikuwa naangalia i knew it it was still there So when he said those words mm-hmm. um Francis was like then you replied to him yes. and I'm like oh yeah that's the chorus and I'm uh-huh. like fantastic that's the chorus funga inge hapo ndani maliza wewe ingia maliza finished yeah it was done and then it became a success it became a success i enjoyed shooting the video mm. it was fun and everything yeah, yeah. but were mm. you looking for a bad boy though were you really looking for a bad boy at mm. that age no <laughs> <laughs> My personal life was uh, far from <laughs> yeah. I think I used to except one particular song. I think most of the songs were things I used to like imagine mm-hmm. and put myself in that situation. But not necessarily what I'm going through. There are one or two songs that were very personal. Yeah. But zile zingine likwa tu zile za. Kuna jibamba tu. Eh na jibamba tena ndike song iko hivi. Eh. Yeah like like a bad boy like how do girls. Mm. Like what is the attraction? That like sawa what to andike. Uko sure uko tu hata wewe una you know Natural, you I'll be honest with you we, even in terms of people I have dated. Yes. Um miss you what what tech to ndio maybe na kwanga na magnet attack. More often than not yes. the people yeah I don't know. Si jini kuna magnet ya tech na scientist. Yes. Yo in eco. Eco. But there are few yes. bad ones. Of course. Yeah. Yes. But now when you are looking back because now again from an audience perspective but Amia was like sa pia mean to take a bad boy <laughs> <So> like you <laughs> you get it. Not good. You yeah, but yeah. you see like cuz we didn't <clears throat> even have digital so mm. stations would have you listen to a money like the whole day five mm. times in a day. Wimbo iko tu hapo, right? When now you look back at those songs is that a proud moment for you though or if you were to go back would you change anything? I wouldn't change anything mm-hmm. because you see um those songs ended up teaching me a lot of things you know 
And um, as much as I was singing, I'm falling for a bad boy. Me character development in Lipatua kwa life yangu. Elitoka kwa bad boy. So you learn that, okay, fine, I'm here saying that I'm falling for a bad boy. But when you finally fall for one, ana kuchapa character development ingine, epic. You take years to recover from yeah. it. So those are the lessons you learn in life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. But now as I as I close that chapter, Nyashinsky is doing amazing. Like people look at him and yes. oh God, like I personally I love love <laughs> listening to Nyashinsky. Given you're on this you. other end right now, mm-hmm. would you find yourself, you know, like let me listen to Nyashinsky for the artistic part of it. Mm-hmm. And now where do you set boundary on the kind of music you listen to first? Do you still listen to Nyashinsky? Um I'll be honest, from time to time, yes. I'll come across it. Yeah. I follow him on Instagram. Yes. So, of course, when he releases a song, I'll be like, what are you up to so, now? Yeah, it's like, oh, that's not bad. Okay. You know. Yeah. And um, he's a talented artist. Yes. Like, in terms of being gifted, Sezi mm-hmm. Danganya. <laughs> God was like, writing talent. Beautiful. Ah, yes. Performers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he is such a gifted artist. Mm-hmm. In terms of me, where I'm, I'm at right now, um, I think it's, I'm drawn towards uh, different kind of music. Mm-hmm. That's my binge right now. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. So what I'm drawn to right now is a bit different. Mm. And what I'm listening to is a bit different. Mm. And it's mainly because of... Um, that's where I'm at right now. Okay, yeah. good. I'll Nothing. get to that. Like, I, not yeah. yeah. I, I'll get to that. But let 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 me take you back to something you said. Mm-hmm. There's always a market to satisfy. Yes. I was listening. Um, uh, I was watching this podcast. Something, something. It did said. I. It's stuck in my mind for some reason too. Uh, content creation has now become the nine to five. Yes. It looks easy. It's mm-hmm. passion, mm-hmm. but it's a lot. Yes. It's a lot of work, right? Yes. And one of the things um, the person was saying is how you have to follow a project after project after project and you don't realize how draining that can be. So you are battling with, should I be this Amani? And then you are battling with, now this is my moment to shine. Mm -hmm. How do you walk away at your best moments now, how people would perceive it, Mm -hmm. during your glorious moments and then you decide I'm out? How do you do that? And what happens to this market in your conscience? Um, I was done. <clears throat> I'm very black and white. I don't know gray. So <laughs> because of that, there's no way I could have one foot in and one foot out. I wanted more of God. And I could see um, in my personal walk how that was deteriorating and what it was doing to me. And if I had not checked out at the time I checked out, it was not going to be good. I literally had to catch myself early enough because, um, one, it had become very routine. Number two, um, you've been doing it for so many years. I got into the music industry when I was basically like 19. And when I wanted to check out, I was like 32. My adult life was there. That was my life. It was my everything. And um, you want to get out now and you realize, oh, wow. You're like, okay, I really don't have that many friends. You've missed out on stuff. You've missed out on bridal showers. You've missed out on uh, baby showers. You've missed out on birthdays. You've missed out on weddings. You literally missed out. Why? Because you were following passion. I spent the better part of my adult life just traveling, touring, performing. Do I regret it? No. But I did miss out on a few things mm-hmm. in terms of um, having a personal life and everything. Yeah. I really didn't have that. Mm-hmm. That was the sacrifice. Mm. And the toll it had on me was really great in the sense that, let me just paint a picture of how much I toured. Yes. Um, my mama fua used to know that anakuja anaangalia suitcase zile ili imeachwa hiyo ndio kuna nguo chafu anaosha na hanga na iron ndio mimi nimeshachukua suitcase nyingine nimeenda so we used to pishana like mm-hmm. two three days mm-hmm. i'm in nairobi and then i'm out maximum four five days 
my parents are like oh we don't see you and everything since this thing started you don't like to be associated with us you're not here mm-hmm. and i'm thinking mom that's not the case yes i'm literally just touching down and i'm out i touch down and i'm out and me i never used to leave gigs ikuja na kuuliza unataka ngapi bei ngapi sawa hiyo ni nyimbo tatu and you're like sawa no problem <laughs> <laughs> Contract na saini wa haraka haraka yes. and I'm out. Mm-hmm. So what I realized is I was gigging and touring for maybe close to about 8 to 10 years, no rest whatsoever. Most people who gig and tour abroad do take breaks. They'll take about 3 months break, get back into the studio and yeah. um, do stuff. On one hand here the producers are like your second album, your way overdue. Mimi niko tu I'm just up and down, up and down. Mm-hmm. It took a toll on me. Yeah. Self-care was a rumor. Who is self-care again? It was a gig one gig to another I land here I get up I go and no time to stop and smell the flowers mm-hmm. like I said self care was a rumor so now that takes a toll on you at mm-hmm. some point mm-hmm. where you're just you're done yeah. you're tired and just little things can start triggering you mm-hmm. and you start realizing that then happiness is now slowly drifting into yes. depression and everything yes. so I used to get irritated by very small things that like the slightest thing could set me off. Yeah. Wow. How was the management though during your secular moments? How was the support I, like? I was lucky to have um there's one manager I still remember her till mm. today. If you're watching this, oh. God bless you. You were you were amazing. Mm-hmm. You are amazing and may God bless you. Um she was amazing. Like she You've got a manager who sort of gets you. Ha, she used to Doreen used to handle things. She's like, "Okay, so we're doing a launch in Tanzania. Yeah, no problem. What would you like?" And everything that she like, "This is what I see. This mm-hmm. is she was hard working yes. and she got it and everything." So I appreciate Doreen. Uh helped me launch um my album in Tanzania, mm-hmm. get myself do certain things in Tanzania yes. nice with people who I knew there in Tanzania just to be able to enforce a few things for me there even in Kenya mm. she was very she was gentle and good and everything um outside of that um I was lucky enough to have several people within the industry who believed in um, yeah. the brand and everything and they helped but they knew very little about my personal life mm. I am quite secretive very yes very hey, i'll go to very <laughs> not quite yeah, very, very i'll go for a gig i yes. will smile mm-hmm. and then go home and mm-hmm. wail for hours and ask me there <laughs> yeah i wake up with red eyes and i think the only people who probably see that side of me is family family mm-hmm. know they, they know. know that i have a but but yangu ya yes. happy go lucky nation yeah so them cuz you see family is family You know you'll be with them day and night and they'll tell when you've moved from being happy and bubbly mm. to just straight up irritable okay. yeah. yeah and i remember because if someone was not talking about a man it was wahu yes. if it wasn't wahu was avril there back then i i think so but it was, was more coming up. she was yeah. coming up avril yeah. was coming up but mm. it was amani or wahu yes. did you feel the pressure to outdo wahu did you ever yeah. been like This is a Whitney Maria situation right now, you know. <laughs> no, yes. No. Mm-hmm. No, no. Um what happened is that I think we respected each other as artists. She knew that that's Amani's flair and this is mine. And if you look very closely, our brands were not that similar. Yes. You know. Yeah. So her brand was crafted in a different way from my brand mm-hmm. and because of that you could have that mutual sort of respect yeah. but strangely enough pale nilikuwa naenda tu niko na mkuta like wa line up tu nakuta wahu name like that like yeah that always happens you know it always happens you find yourself like this one gig we did in Liberia I was what Nameless, wow, I'm like, yeah, it always happens. And I used to always know even for Nameless. Yes. If Nameless does this to her, I just know, give it 2 3 months, I'll go because our sounds were crafted to be similar. Yes. So there's also that respect that you know, okay, fine, that's her sound, that's her brand and this is my brand. Mm. However, the audience how attacky. No. 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 We don't want peace. Yes, yes. we want violence. Yes, violence. <laughs> no. Now, when nameless, eh, there must be something must between be something. her nameless. Oh, kuna vile pa. I've even heard stories of guys saying at your nameless um 
dated them. I'm like, ah, Fana, no, 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 people snow. Yes. The fact that you do a song with someone does not mean that you date them. Yeah. And even, like, you know, me, I'm a light skin, so <laughs> chocolate to light skin. Hiya, so. watcha. <laughs> Okay. No, yes. I know. <laughs> Chocolate to light skin uh, is where I'll gravitate towards. Yes. So you see, it was just a person, it was a colleague. You're working with this person uh-huh. and um you basically look up because see nameless came before Way me. Before. So you're looking up to even me or Katya was being told I'm doing a collab with nameless. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't breathe because I'm like <gasps> Oh my I'm doing god. A collaboration with nameless. You know. So that there's that respect yes. you get. Yes. And in the industry what I learned, it's very important for your colleagues to respect you, you know, unless maybe you've come from a situation like, you know, a beautiful love story like Nameless and Wahoo yeah. and everything. Please respect your colleagues, mm-hmm. Bala. To yeah. Eshimiane. Eshimiane. Yeah. Kidu songs, your husband, you did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you still good people though with Nameless? Yeah. Munongia? <laughs> yeah, tunongia. It's a sense of, eh, baba to me. So him... I know Nameless as Kamonski. Yes. I know him as Baba to me. Mm. Yeah. Aww. So we've literally seen each other come from that mm-hmm. to now being parents yes. and understanding what that means for our careers, his career where he's where he's at, and yeah. my career where it's at. Okay. Yeah. And then you know you just get to this point where guys, I'm done, I'm out, right? Yes. And you would expect because someone is giving their soul to God, there's jubilation, a money welcome to the kingdom, right? Mm-hmm. But then you still have other people saying she just realized secular music is not paying. She's growing old. That's why she's left the in. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you hear any of that and of how course. was your reaction to Um, it? I heard that, but I knew I had like at least 10 more years left in the industry. Look at my colleagues. Most of them, they had it. My transition happened around when I was how old? 32. Mm. I had seven more years in yes. the industry, had eight more years. I'm 43 now. So I had close to seven to ten years. I knew, because you know you can tell the trajectory. Yes. I knew I had seven years. And by then, those seven years, I knew I had entered the sweet spot. Because now you have built your audience. People know you. Yeah. You have a strong fan base. So it's really about capitalizing on that fan base and mm-hmm. seeing how you can now maximize it to build something that will have some sort of longevity. Yes. So you've reached the sweet spot. You know, you're not you're not trying to be famous. Yeah. Now you actually have achieved an audience. So how do you maximize that audience? How do you add value to brands via that audience? Mm. So you're at that sweet spot. Yeah. And there for the next seven years, you just know you're at a sweet spot. Mm-hmm. So how do you maximize on that? Mm-hmm. So it was yeah, it was actually the prime. Because from then on, if you release music, you still have an audience. Mm-hmm. They will listen to it. Yes. They'll appreciate it. Are you going to be the hot new trending thing that has just come out? No, because then now you have to pave way mm. for those who are coming after you. People paved way for you, so you need to pave way for others. Mm-hmm. Don't hang on for too long. Mm. But it's like a sweet spot because then you have built a good fan base. Yes. Maximize on it. On it. Huh? But now me was walking away. You, you are walking away. Yeah. You are completely walking away. I was done. How was the embracement like though by the gospel industry? How 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 was that like for you? Interesting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting. Uh shocked here and there. Mm-hmm. But it was interesting, but I'd made my resolve. Um and I didn't announce when I got born again. Yes. I really didn't announce. Yes. I got born again and I thought, you know what? I need to Yes, there is the God of my mother, the one she preaches to me yes. all the time. Mm-hmm. But I want to experience this God. Mm-hmm. I want to learn him. I want to have an encounter with him, to basically have deep revelations with him. So I went to Bible school and I loved it. Oh. I had so much fun. But because I would not announced I was born again, yes. I had people in Bible school looking at me like, what are you doing here? Dean, are you aware that this girl is, is in not? Class? <laughs> and who authorized this? Whoa. You know, so those looks were there, as in for the longest time. But, you know, the dean used to calm them down and go like, Sejali, I'm your okay. Oh, wow. But how come we don't know? Oh, yes. sense of you would better announce because mm. you are behind the scene na uko class, Bible school. How, hey, how come we don't know this? There's that pressure. There is that pressure. You've not announced. And I was like, ma'am, Is it a requirement, though, for me to announce I'm saved it's again? not. Uh-huh. But you see, I understand where they were coming from, just to be sure. 
you know mm. that au jase mo mi okoka tu ndi wengie bible school yes. and the bible school i went for is quite rigorous it's quite intense so you're basically doing it's not like two times a week three times a week apana it's almost every day and it's really intense mm-hmm. but i had to focus on what i was doing and the dean is gracious mm-hmm. yes okay so yes dean hi oh, he's such a gracious person mm-hmm. alikuwa nani ona church i used to go to church oh. every sunday atakani menda gig atakani kona hai i show up and the dean used to tell me i'm waiting for you wait yeah. so wait i mean so even in this in in that center of you like associating with other people you also get to go to the alcohol and the smokes or just the alcohol um the you alcohol you and hangi pamoja mimi smoke sidai mm. no hang alcohol that one no yeah. alcohol i did actually did but i have to say the dean used to see me and he was in judgmental which was so important and that's why now going back to what you're saying about embracing and everything when somebody gets born again or is thinking about boy getting born again you need to be very you need to be compassionate you know yes wo me okoka your life is good at maybe bombe o jai onda but show some grace to that person you know just be gracious the dean never not once mean in ajua the night before nililala three <clears throat> to soothe my pain i took one or two glasses of wine yes. and the next day i'm like you know what i need some jesus and i'm in church wow and the dean will see me i'll be looking down i'll sit down mm. i'll have my notebook i'll note whatever it is that i'm noting down and i'll finish and i'll go home again i still say even the church that i went to, to them i have to say kudos to them nobody condemned me wow the dean never condemned me they used to see me in church and they're like interesting she's here but i know if maybe i was somewhere else i probably would have not gotten the same reception mm-hmm. so back to what you're saying about embracing it's important that christians realize that at that point in time someone is very fragile that how you treat them in that moment can be a deciding moment of whether they stay or in they Christianity live. or they leave. And when people experience hostility from Christians, some of them can swear off the church for the rest of their life. Mm, church wounds. Yes, church wounds they'll be like mimi huku sirudi tena watu wa church wako hivi wako vile wako hivi, but it's really about being sensitive and everything realizing that this person has just gotten born again and deliverance happens in different ways for people you'll find that maybe that person who's smoking a cigarette when they get born again they are able to drop that habit like right there mm-hmm. and then and for some it takes time mm-hmm. no it is a process so don't condemn them yes. embrace them embrace them yeah if you have a book give them a book mm-hmm. these days there's so much resource online forward something invite them for a fellowship mm. just see how you can build their faith mm-hmm. yeah do you think we've perfected the church like the church is for certain people i've always imagined though <laughs> if today someone who is dressed inappropriately comes to church what would that reaction mm. be like you know mm. do you think the image we've created about the church is we are sandy dress best yako come to church if someone mm. is different or they don't move the way you move mm-hmm. then it's an issue and do you think it's pushing a lot of people away from the church mtu anasema chaniji watch ye someone yangu hapa ya sara jeks vizuri peke yangu nikunywe kawaini kangu Um, like I said we need to embrace more. Yeah, we need to embrace more. I'm not saying that uh, the girl with a super super short skirt is allowed to be in church juu ata atakuja kufanya wa brothers wanguke. So, it's really about just be gentle with her. Maybe you've noticed that she likes wearing really short skirts and it's bothering you. Befriend her. Be friends with her like, "Hi, how are you doing? Mm-hmm. Good." And everything. Become her friend. In the process, just let her know. Yes. Let her know. you know but come from a position you're not coming from a position of this cat mm. spirit of jezebel <laughs> <laughs> this one 
Kreswa umekuja kuangusha pasta na mabrothers kanisani. Alafu <laughs> kae hapo mbele pasta mbele. Unaribu na choma una choma una choma. Yes, yeah. But if it is somebody you can tell a person who's doing it deliberately and a person who just does doesn't not know, know any better. Mm. So for that person who doesn't know any better, mm-hmm. befriend them. Kila siku unaambia ni aje how are you doing and everything? Have you had lunch? Come mm-hmm. join us for lunch. Mm-hmm. As they come and join you for mm-hmm. lunch, you can just gently put it out there and she'll learn and yes. she'll know. For me my dressing has changed over time. You know I've actually felt more comfortable. Yeah, I'm used to wear. Thank you. Yes. I used to love my short 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 yes. short, 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 short short dresses, you know. And I learned over time that, you know, it's better to cover up and everything. Mm-hmm. Were there people around me who have actually helped me with that journey? Yes. yes. And everything. Yeah. yeah. But there's a generation that tends to think I don't have to cover up. See, it's what's in my heart that God is looking for. My short skirts, my zinaingiliana wapi na kutenda. Mato yana pazia uko sawa, lakini kuna bro ako church, maybe hiyo ndio kitu anacho basi. Maybe hiyo ndio kitu ana struggle nayo. You get what I'm saying? There could be that person church. I always say this, church, another thing, church is not perfect. Church is you and me. We all go there for different reasons. Umefika hapo juu umeokoka recently and you're looking for spiritual nourishment. Kuna brother may come him he's struggling with lust. After una kani next to him na skirt yako iko How? See the dude atarudi tu. Yes. Ten times for the sake for the sake of the brother. Of the brother. Please. Cover up. The brother kaitu hapo nyuma. <laughs> so just for the sake of the yes. brother you oh, know yeah. and mm-hmm. even for you as a woman just cover it up mm-hmm. cover it up yeah. when you go for dates with your boyfriend ah please dress below nataka ku dress yes yeah me when i'm out with my husband yes i will dress You nicely will kill that look. Ah, of course. You will have to kick you. Your leg nicely. Like before you forget. <laughs> Let me remind you. Let me remind you. Yeah. <laughs> Esta Vesema, Esta said, even right now she just goes by the bedroom mirror alafu anasema like me ni kitu bado hiyo yes. and the husband has no choice ataya yes. anakubali yes. we ni kitu yes yeah. just in case he forgets in case but that's for me and him yeah that is for me for you and, and him. him yes it's we, not for the public so even mm. as i'm going out in public i have to be careful is it respectful just understand you know even proverbs 31 says that you're clothed in white linen and purple which means purple is a color of royalty just understand who you are understand who you are in Christ Jesus. Yes. Yes. Of you of you. Mm. Usi dress of you. Usi jibebe of you. Usi jibebe of you. Mm. Your royalty. who you are. Uh-huh. For me the greatest thing was understanding who I am in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a daughter of a king. Would a daughter of a king to talk IV vile yako? Sunanga vile mega no dress at all. Kuna vile anajibeba na kuanga na you know there's a certain way they carry themselves. Mm-hmm. Understand who you are in Christ Jesus. Don't demean yourself. Good. Yeah. So you found inward satisfaction. You yes. found that you're beautiful yes. as compared to when you're doing a song you want to pull a short skirt now you realized I'm enough. I'm enough. I don't have to. And even then I was dealing with insecurities. I was insecure. You? Ha? You have no idea. <laughs> Wait, you? I had insecurities. Amani amani. Mm. In those songs you Kibao. This one I wanna hear. Mm. How now? I had a lot of insecurities. For the longest time I had um dealt with mild acne and I didn't feel, you know, yes, ni kwa na makeup na everything, but I knew that that's a part of me that's not perfect. So so that you're not looking at me and maybe see my breakouts and my blemishes and everything. See where are short things wangalia migu si angalia uso sana. Wow, distract never have imagined so that. So that is a part of me that I was never confident about. Mm. Never ever confident about. Yeah. I knew that my skin was not perfect. Mm-hmm. It was not flawless. So I'll direct you to 
other friend place yes go figure mad macho ya angalia migu eh hey, simba simba usiangalie uso sana yes, yes. niangalia migu <coughs> wow. no you just you just proudly said i'm 43 right now yes. right so I, i don't think i think it's a clip of you i saw somewhere and someone i don't know what's wrong with people and aging i know people, that clip <laughs> people gotta realize that aging is a blessing yes Me being 43 means I've seen this year. Yes. I'm enjoying this year, right? Yes. But now for me, the most interesting part was someone trying to bash you because of you experiencing better years. When it comes to women and aging, what do you want to say about that? And have you ever felt the pressure of you wanting to go back and look like a man in your 20s? No. I don't even think I can handle it. <laughs> I don't think my body can handle it. Yes. We have moved on. The body is different. Mm-hmm. Um yes, you find people and it's not I think even the guys who are commenting on that clip. I'm like mmefika huko mmetoka kwa Instagram page yangu na Facebook huko ndio mmeland sawa. And I don't respond to that kind of stuff because then I realize that um what I've realized is people who want to hurt you are hurting. And in my head I'm like, "Hey, may you heal from whatever is hurting you because me I'm not there. Mm. I'm okay with how old I am. I am 43. At my prime, I did beautiful things. I achieved amazing things and I'm now looking to have an impactful life over people as opposed to priding myself in how I look and all that. It's good to look good. It's oh, it's good to spruce it up yes. and doll up. It's very very good, but that's not my focus. So you you if you're still, you know, you're kwa hiyo kitu ya age, this how you'll also age. Mm unless you have a solution as you see Bill Gates to live for a million but it's going to catch up with you it's going to your line mm-hmm. yeah it's you're, gonna, you're, you're up next okay it's yeah. going to catch up it's going you. to catch up wow that's interesting because i'm like why is it that people have a problem with aging if i hear a woman is 50 it makes me feel good you're seeing your 50s you're you actually, should be happy and they say like <laughs> your 40s are the most beautiful yet is they that are true beautiful They are beautiful your right now in my 40s I'm comfortable with myself I know what I like I know what I don't like and more so that I'm in Christ Jesus I am in a blissful state I don't miss um like for example someone asked when you see a billboard and you know their list of performances and there's this great gig coming you don't feel like I'm like way Me for me all I see is being backstage till 3 a.m. with high shoes, being tired, probably I'm not eaten. I don't want to eat because I don't want to have a bulging belly. Thank you Lord. That at 3 a.m. I'll be dreaming or having prophetic visions. Yes. yes. And home. <laughs> and I'm peaceful. Home. Peaceful. And I experience that and that happened. Mm. But at 43 I don't want to be there. Yes. I want to be in a different place. I want to be experiencing every stage like I said seasons. Mm. Understand your seasons, embrace them. That was that season. We had those lessons we learned in those seasons. There were consequences to those seasons. I'm in a different season. Yeah. I'm excited. You, are you know. Excited. Fine, you're looking at me and thinking, "Oh, she's aged. Of course I've aged, Germany. I cannot look 18 forever." And I am okay with it. Mm. Yeah. I could that's beautiful, but one of the things I was also telling you and Esther mm-hmm. is how private you are with your yes. life. When you introdu- when you say I'm a wife and I'm a mother, some people are like, "Wait, why? Wow. When did she get married? When did she get married? <laughs> you know, when when yes. did she become a mom? Mm-hmm. You know? I I don't want to get into your personal life because that's something I know you don't like it being public. Yeah. But how has it served you having your personal life? Ha, just knowing this is me and this is gonna be private people don't even know like you are married a man <laughs> yes, have I'm a kid married and you i know, have a child you know ha, ha, was that a decision you consciously made that i'm not gonna yes. put my family in public and why yes um i didn't want my family to be in public at all number two, my husband is not a public figure him i mean just like esther yes. he's not in the limelight mm. so him is thinking why are you dragging me to your thing <laughs> this, yes. this is you mm-hmm. and the good thing is that he respects you for what you're doing and what you know what you're all about mm-hmm. and he has his own life so it would be unfair for me to drag him into my world which is not and it's not something he doesn't like mm-hmm. i always say you know we're good where we're happy in our space one of us is in the limelight the other one is not and that's just how we are mm-hmm. for my son no never ah uh, ah uh, 
hadi afikie age where ajiamulie ajiamulie i have an instagram account and this is my content i will support him i'll be like okay so this is the content you're creating how do you want to do it if he decides to be there i will back him up 100% but right now he doesn't even know what it means you know feel like creating for him a page and then he's Asana. writing for us caption mommy fed me <laughs> this one <morning." laughs> Hiyo <laughs> atufanyi yeah. let him enjoy being a child let him not even care how he looks like after a long day outside what are rudi kwa nyuma na niko zile za wa leo acha tu cuz you know he's a boy he yes. wants to be out there he'll play with mad he'll atakwa tu ko with his friends riding his bike mm. come back looking like he was rolling in the mud and you wonder yes. are you riding a bike or are you rolling in the mud He's a child. He's a child. Let him just be a child. Let mm. him enjoy his childhood. I don't want to approach him. I, I understand where parents are coming from. They want to share the joy of their child with the world. They want to share their happy, you know, happy moments with the child and the joy that that yes. child brings them with the world. Yes. But for me, me, I want him to what a kanataka aingie. But otherwise, go outside come back muddy don't worry i'll remove sand from your hair because yes. i don't know what happens with them and sand and oil i mm. mean and, and soil in the hair yes because that happens quite often at the end of the day i'm usually there like hey. yeah. so you can imagine that posing to take pictures ah, no let uh-huh. him just be a child let him be a yeah. child mm. and uh, w- one of the things i love when i see especially women who are in the limelight it's that if your partner does not understand that it can easily intimidate them yes. for you your partner would you say he has played a crucial role in you being impactful and also being in public at the same time Yes. Um I think anybody who knows him knows that he's my number one mm. supporter. Mm. They know that if there's anybody who will push me will be like do this. Do that. Maybe you need to do this. Even like right now the person pushing me to release music number one is my husband. Yes. He's the one. So if you find I'm not even probably releasing it, it's not because of him. <laughs> him on the other hand he's like yeah do it release the content do this and that he understands who i am and he's comfortable with himself you know ion yako yeah yeah go there eh? go and do your thing mm-hmm. yeah. lastly on that because you know you are you are now you, you in the gospel industry you are christian and you mentioned proverbs 31 right yes. and there's always a question that comes when it's time to submit eh? and if i don't ask it i'll do a great disservice to the audience mm. in your marriage right now how do you define that role i think a proverbs 31 woman is is a process you learn uh, marriages people craft out marriages to be oh happily ever after oh, my priest jumping and sucked me <laughs> off my feet look at me i'm happily married hello <laughs> bye bye singleness <laughs> bye bye loneliness huh? <laughs> hey my friend first of all your marriage nearly fine and you're okay as in cause you enter and you're like whoa what is happening here <laughs> so you people have come from two different backgrounds uh-huh. and now mekutana yes na mnafahamu elewane it's a process in fact um one person i know who is a marriage counselor told me it takes seven years to perfectly gel before then you guys are you know me i was single for a while i lived in my beautiful diva moment single woman pad you know uh, yes by myself you know independence and everything you have your space i'll have my space My husband is an extrovert. He wants to be in your space. We are together. Come sit here. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I am like, you happy? Yeah, you're reading your book, yeah. Good. You want water? That's good. I have my water. Him, let's drink the water together. Oh, you see? Let's <laughs> we go. Are, we are together. Oh my god. In fact, what any ke stroke maji yako. Si tuko pamoja. So, <laughs> you have to <laughs> Hey, dear Lord. You have to embrace the fact that this one togetherness is togetherness. Hey. <laughs> you are me personally I'm very <laughs> distant <laughs> together. <laughs> <laughs> That's your space. Are you ready? <laughs> are you happy? <laughs> Do you need water? Oh my god. Uh-huh. And I just had to realize that that's him. You know, and I have to respect that. and i have to see how we can live cohesively <laughs> and everything mm. and even be happy with that 
and all. Yes. I remember there's a friend of mine who told me, I was like, no, I don't like, I was one of those girls who I'm like, when I was single, don't call me every day. It's a bit, dis- you know, you shouldn't be independent enough not to call me. Why are you calling me? In fact, texting, it shows that you're a bit needy. That was me when I was single. And I meet my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Paragraphs on WhatsApp. How do you think this and this and this? <laughs> You've opened a can of war. I'm just seeing messages. One, yes. two. I'm like, ah, hey. It takes me time to answer. Yeah. Because it's a lot. But with time, I got to appreciate the fact that, um, yeah, not like a conversation. So engage in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Indulge in it. Yes. Go ahead. But what advice do you have for introverts dating extroverts? Go I'm for it. A- oh, okay. <laughs> It will bring out a side of you that you never knew existed. Mm -hmm. Uh, My husband is an extrovert. My son is an extrovert. Bringing out a side of me, I'll just give you an example. Mm. Um, My son will come from greeting everybody in the compound. Kabla mjenda shule. Yes. Hi. That's the gardener. Hi, how are you? I ate this and this in the morning. How are you doing? You know, he says hi to everybody. To an extent, even when I go to the supermarket, He'll say hi. He'll be like, hi, hello, hi. And one day he said, mommy, say hello. And I'm like, where? Wow. So he'll teach you things. Hey, now you have to say hello. You have to say hello. Hey. We are saying hello to everybody. Mm. He's an extrovert. Yeah. And I've had to embrace that. The dad is an extrovert. Understand that. Yes. Embrace it. It's what you want. Yeah. So go for it. Go for it. And it makes you happy. And it makes you happy because it- now you start seeing... <laughs> The humor in it. Yes. They're like, okay, yeah, this person actually likes this. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my goodness, how this can be a pleasure for someone, I don't understand. But you know what? Let's for the sake it. of peace and love. Let's do it. Let us enjoy. Yes. Yeah. But it's a happy place for you to be in. I marriage. enjoy being mm-hmm. a mom. Mm-hmm. I enjoy being married. Like I said, we normally joke and say we are not couple goals. Please. Because we've gone through our moments. We have had good moments, we've had highs, we've had lows. I remember before I conceived my son, we went through a rough patch that wasn't easy. Mm. And um, even after that, you know, so I know Instagram and YouTube will portray happy couple goals, yes. holding hands, always and hugging forever. each other, always and forever, smiling. Minta kwambia tu kitukuta tu kwa supermarket na mmoja kona trolley mbele na mwingine nyuma ni watu ni situation za marriage ni maisha tu yes. but tuko nyuma moja tu mm-hmm. yes good huh? and maybe to wind up on that there are women also who you've happened to be to share the stage with or yes. just people who are in the same scene and they get pressure every now and then we are taolewa lini we are tapata mtoto lini for some of those women who are watching what would you like to tell them Times and seasons belong to God. Good. And prayer changes things. Thanks. I remember I experienced that. For the longest time, Nikifungwa Facebook, we are tolewa nini. Then now others will start a debate. Debate in Nelea, tu lona two messages. Tu, 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 At Instagram, are you even married? This and that. Even when that video came out, yes. the video you're talking about, yeah. there were still comments of, is she even married? How old is she? Did she ever get married and everything? But if that's what you want, because for there's some women who yes. do not want that. Yeah. Um, if that's what you want, pray about it. Mm-hmm. I prayed about it, you know. And I just told God, I'm like, yeah, me, I want to be married. Good. Yeah, as far as matters, I'm jumping up and down here. Actually, I desire to be married from a very early age. By 13, I'm going to be married. Yeah. Yeah. Good, I love that, and thank you for sharing yes. that part with us. I appreciate it. I you're really like welcome. Keeping it. I I don't share, so yes. you're very lucky. <laughs> no, um, I, I appreciate. Oh, you brought out another nah, side. It's the me. yellow. It's the mustard couch effect. It's mustard. Couch. <laughs> 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 it is mustard couch. Yes, but yes, mm-hmm. I desire to be married. Mm-hmm. I desire to have a happy home. I was aware that marriage is not perfect, but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful experience. Mm. And if you enter into marriage, understanding the fact that it takes effort from both of you to make that a beautiful experience and a beautiful yeah. life, you will not enter with a whole, sorry to call this, but with, with a whole Delulu mm-hmm. um, <laughs> thing of, oh, my queen's charming, yes. is this? 
you know, so that when he does something, you won't be shocked like, Prince Chami, you did, oh, you did what? Oh, you know, calm down. <laughs> yes. Even you will get to know Prince Charming has his quirks. Mm. Yeah. Just calm down. Yeah. And, but it's a beautiful place it's to be. It's a beautiful, Love beautiful that. experience. Being mm. a mom is beautiful. It has its challenges. But yes. That's what makes it beautiful. Yeah. That you will look back and say, wow. Yes. I'm glad that I got to experience this in this life. Beautiful. Yeah. Let's of talk. course, God. Yes. God. 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 God needs to be at the center. Like they say, it's God, your husband, and you. Mm -hmm. To make it strong. Make it strong. Yeah. Beautiful. Let's talk about music. I'm watching you. I love Pete's song, right? Mm -hmm. So in the morning, I'm listening. I'm watching you and Pete's song and Karura Choir. Mm -hmm. Can you see Karura that? Voices. Karura Voices. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm watching you and there's this part of you that just wants to be there. There's this part of you that doesn't even want to wind up the song, right? Mm -hmm. Now any moon, actually started over all over again yes subscribers mm. channel killer Kila kitu. Kitu. you cleaned house yes. and you said i'm starting over so i want to touch on two things the power of starting from scratch mm -hmm. right and then when you are now singing for god what does that make you feel so those two things amazing yeah the power of starting over again is that you're wiser way more wiser and you understand why you are starting over you see, mine was a conscious decision. I decided this is the direction I'm going. Mm -hmm. And I knew that as much as I've gotten born again, you see, as much as people say she's doing it for the money, what you don't understand is that the audience you have built over time, yeah. like you for your secular songs, yes. because you've gotten born again, they're not crossing with you. You have to build a new audience as a gospel artist. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that, bye, you've left that behind. Very strong audience. And now you're building a new audience. You can agree with me even in terms of content creation. Even when you move from Tuko yeah. and now starting as Lean. Yeah. You start from somewhere and you build it up. And that's what I have been doing. And don't be afraid. Do it when you're wiser. Now I realize that, um, yes, I'm doing gospel. But there's even much more than that. Which is basically um, raising even a new generation and everything. Mm -hmm. I don't count it all loss yeah. because the things that I learned from the music industry were part of the, it was business and everything. Yes. The industry part of music doesn't change. Mm -hmm. And even as much as you're a gospel artist and you're ministering, utakutana na yo part. That kapat utakutana na yo. It doesn't change. You know, yes, there is the ministering part that is the most important part it should take 70 percent but ako kapat kengin utakutana na utakutana na yeah yes. so i don't call it all it's not all lost it's it was not. beautiful yes i love it you asked how do i feel it's man. amazing it's amazing back then i was entertaining i had fun being on stage but now it's something else i can't the fact that when you raise praises that the presence of God can actually come down, ay, there's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like that. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Let no one lie to you. It cannot be equated to anything else. And there's just a, there's an amount of connection that gets to someone yes. when they see you in that song. Can I just be honest? Mm -hmm. Like I can sing Bad Boy. <laughs> I take you come to Nicole, like I could do that. Like it's good. Yes. It's good vibes. It's good energy. Yes. But as I was watching you, I I started reflecting on a couple of things too. Like that spoke to me. Amen. Like honestly, that spoke to me. Amen. And I was like, Thank wait, God. but I've been listening to this all long. But I join in here. I do in here. Ina may come to Saina. Ina ningia. But like honestly, that's the difference. That's the difference. Gospel music is meant to minister. It's meant to either evangelize or usher in the presence of God. That's normally the two main things. Mm -hmm. But even at that, there are like so many other different dimensions and layers to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently going through a program that's actually teaching me more about those layers and dimensions. It's called the School of David. Mm -hmm. Just learning what um, gospel music is and just being able to access all those yes. dimensions and maximize mm -hmm. 
your ministry mm-hmm. and it's just beautiful okay. when you start learning that you know with gospel music when you sing you know it can even usher the presence of angels mm-hmm. i mean it's just it's beautiful it's beautiful does it's our, different it's different yeah. does our current gospel scene inspire you and when people say kenya hakuna gospel anymore no. um, <laughs> hakuna gospel artists anymore how how does that make you feel from your observation are we on the right path and also are some of the people there because the money is good I think that whole thing of saying that the money is good is is not true. Mm. Because some of these things take time. It's the same way people say amekuwa pasta juu ya pesa. Aki jaribu hata wewe siku moja. Amekuwa pasta juu ya pesa. Jaribu. Siku moja tu chukua Bible na uingie kwa hall na uanze ku preach wani watu wangapi watakuja na ni wangapi watakupatia do. Just try it. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. And um you'll find that even as much as someone will start off with the right intentions, what happens is that sometimes someone can start with the right intention, but in the process it can get corrupted. Mm-hmm. That's what happens. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you it's never easy. Yes. We jaribu to one day decide to I'm going to be a gospel artist. Release your songs. Mm. Wana kazi itapenya. Uone. Ama kama unataka you want to form a church, mm. go start, get your bible, look for a corner or look for a hall and say I'm meeting here every Sunday and see how many people come. Oh, that will come. Yes. Good. Then you will realize that for the better part it's not money that is the driving factor. Mm. What happens is that the intention they start off well, but unfortunately get corrupted in the process mm-hmm. then now that corruption is what you get to know yes. about but the truth is yeah it's not easy mm-hmm. hey apana. Apana. and the state of the gospel industry i'd say um we're good we're good i mean there are songs that bless me in and out yeah. i'm always listening to music yes. i can't miss every friday i think and every thursday which is when guys release music there's always something beautiful coming out mm-hmm. yes um there's a lot that can be done to improve but music iko aki iko poa iko poa and you can you can find really beautiful music music that will bless your soul and mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. for those who you feel when i fanya pesa or they have corrupted it or whatever stop listening then don't listen yeah. you know it's a yeah. personal choice mm-hmm. and you will find that maybe that's your opinion maybe they haven't really you understand mm-hmm. and i usually say let god judge mm-hmm. it's not in my place to judge. Yeah. Especially where ministry is concerned, you're not your mungu. Not your mungu. But if you feel that when you listen to something it's not ministering to you, then don't listen. Don't listen. Yeah. So, so some, did you make good money in secular? Oh yeah. It was good money. It was good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. It was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. How how did you invest that? because the reason that one is up. tricky. <laughs> <laughs> That's the part I didn't mention I want to talk about. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> how how well did you invest that? The reason I asked. Back then I thought it was well until I realized <laughs> <laughs> I need to go back for more lessons. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a learn, it's a learning process. Yeah. You think uko set. How do you do it by the way? Si coset. Yeah. One of the greatest lessons I learned in terms of investment is um As much as you're told to invest there is something that's very important which I always say you need to have regular income multiple streams of income yes is very very important yes. and regular income unazambia oh invest unajua investment wewe bila unajuanga ni kununua shamba but how much does that bring you every month you know is it something that you can liquidate very fast in case of a crisis So like have multiple streams. Have multiple streams mm. of income and basically invest in things that will give you regular income and of course kuna zile za long term mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah. But you learn. Me yeah. learn. I was like oh, here we are, you know, and you continue learning and um even if you invest in a business, yes. I invested in a business, the business did well. Businesses have seasons. There are seasons where woo, yeah. things will happen. There are seasons you will be thriving, things are happening. Just one law in the country can change the trajectory of your business yes just the dollar can change the trajectory like of your the business day. just like the other day yes. it can just be on steroids yeah. and going up yeah. and change the trajectory of your business mm-hmm. so have multiple streams of income Good. i think that's the greatest take i have 
learned because yeah. I'm still learning to perfect it. Beautiful. You know, it's difficult status yeah. yeah. Millionaire. Millionaire. <laughs> I'm still learning. I don't know why. Kwa kiyari. Bado niko kwa hiyo shule. Niko kwa shule. Niko kwa shule. But how was it like working with guys like Pete Stone and also in the gospel scene who would you want to collaborate with that maybe you are just Many, many, many. Mm. Pizza, and I think when you work with pizza, we flow. Like I said, there are some guys who artistically, yes. go too sour. Yeah. Sons of, are you seeing? Yeah, I'm seeing this. You want to do this? You do this. So uh-huh. you kind of flow. Yeah. Who else would I want to work with? There's so many. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I got born again, um, Guardian Angel, oh. the management approached me and asked yes. me, oh, would you like to work Guardian. with Guardian? Yes. yes. But I was like, I was like, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Yes. It was that bad. It was that bad. Me, I was used to secular. I knew secular. And I'm like, Guardian, uh-huh. I'll get back to you. <laughs> We're still getting back. <laughs> We're still getting back. <laughs> so, hmm? yeah. Work with Guardian. He's I, amazing. Yeah. He's amazing. I would like, love baby I, I to know, do but that. I feel like yes. it, but yeah. he's good. Mm-hmm. So, that's one of the things I regret. Yes. But the truth is, I don't know what I'm doing. And... I hadn't really paid attention that much to mm-hmm. gospel music. Mm-hmm. I was secular artist, yeah. you know, yeah. Good. Who mm-hmm. else? Um, last one. There's so many. The last one. Yeah. I love, there's so many, Jackie Gashiri, mm-hmm. Kestin Bogo. Okay. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> All those people. I would love to do a Kikuyu song one day. So yeah. yes, Edith Wairimo. Yes. Yeah. Edith is amazing. Yes. She's amazing. Yes. Me, I would love to see you in Kambua. Oh yes, Kambua. Yes, yes. yes. I, I would love to yes. see a song Kambua with too. you if that time comes. Yes, you know? when the time comes. If that time comes. Yeah. You look so happy, man. I'm happy. In Christ kuna joy, there is peace. Yeah. Me found my peace, I found my joy in in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for God. I really don't know. Yeah, cuz mm-hmm. I could see myself slowly slipping into depression. You know you can tell you're just you're just going there. You're on your way there. But thank God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank God. Huh? Yeah. How movies you like watching? Movies I love watching. I love watching documentaries. I told oh, you I yes. binge watch anything. <laughs> <laughs> movies, uh-huh. series? Uh-huh. No. Yes. Favorite actor though? Favorite actor. Let this me see. My... Like I said, I don't watch a lot of movies, but <sighs> I'm a documentary kind of chick. Mm. Vice. Mm. Oh, Vice is addictive. Because I'm sure there's a notification. Eh, notification. Me, I took a pause. I, <laughs> now when some people tell me they take a pause from Lingugi content, I know. Because yes. I know a eh, Vice, I took a pause. I so, yeah. loved, I loved. Binge watching Vice. Yes. Um, actors that I am not One. a movie One. person. Ata Denzel. Yeah, Denzel Sini looks to watch. No, <laughs> <laughs> no looks ni za Idris Elba. Idris, yes, but Denzel kuna vile. No, Denzel ni passion. So unajua mimi sitaki kukatazwa kwa watching Denzel. You cannot snitch on things. It is good looking. But I forgot to tell you, I like my coffee with a little bit of milk. Oh, I know. So my coil. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we are sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I know Michael is there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, let me see. In terms mm-hmm. of acting and yes. everything, I'm really trying to search. That tells no, you I'm right. not a movie person. You're not person. a movie person. I'm not. It's okay. But documentaries. Yes. Ah. You you snitched on Denzel. <laughs> now you know we were choosing peace. You know. Kwanza penye mbeze kafu. Fine wine. Unangalia kwa jinza. Boss. Hey, we thought that maybe perhaps, but but now, hey, me. But for me, it's for passion. I follow him because of the passion. Lin is our too. <laughs> <laughs> it is okay. But yes, I'm not much of a movie person. Yes, yeah. I watch a what lot do of doing? documentaries. Uh-huh. Apart I watch from a lot docus- of documentaries. Yeah. I lot watch a lot of interior shows, uh, local fashion? and abroad. I love fashion, but not do well, I binge on fashion up and interior. Hey, you, are fashion, you are fashionable though. Thank you. Like I thank God. But oh, interior. It's hmm. good. Eh? 
open house. Um, oh yeah. McGee. Yes. Kenya, of course, there's KTN home, home. With, the, with the what's her name again? This beautiful lady. Natalie. Yeah, yes. Beautiful hair also. I love I watching. Love She's so fashionable. Yes. You know? So it's the fashion exactly. Herself. So yes. there is her, and then of course there are the homes she brings, and I'm yes. like, wow. And I love that it's Kenyan. So um, there's always that thing of ikitune a home because yeah. you know, sometimes you watch. Yeah. Those international interior shows, and mm -hmm. you're like, okay, uh, no, I love how her. do we get? I've watched a couple yeah. of shows. They are I beautiful. wish there was more of that content, yeah. though. Good. Yes. We will, yeah. we'll, we'll, we are getting there creatively. Yes. A lot of creators are trying their best. Mm -hmm. I love where we are right now. Yes. Might not be far, but I can see Kenyans pushing themselves, and it's beautiful. Me too. It's beautiful. Yeah. But if I let you go without the hair part, we were all, we all, even when, what did I ask you when you came? The hair. I'm like, Aman, is this your real hair? It but, is. <laughs> 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 no, that was supposed to be uh -huh. rhetoric, like I asked. So like, it's, it's something. When we, you buy something, <laughs> it belongs you to you. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> Like in this, you had me. I was going to miss it. One, so where, where you are the one who we bought it. You've outed me. I was now going to the part where we bought you it. still have your hair business. I still do, mm. and uh, the hair business moved. Like I said, some of these things I have been chopped. Character development. Yes. I got into the hair business without quite understanding a lot of things about it. What I have learned over time is to focus on what brings me yes. income. I really wanted to be good in the retail part, but retail high quality and letter pesa mm, mm. and retail was chapaying me character development every Kabisa. single day. Yeah. So we moved into wholesale. Okay, beautiful. Is it perfect? No. Yeah. We're still working on it. Yes. Because there are hurdles that you have to also pass on that side. Mm -hmm. Um dollar to chapa character development. Yeah. Because we do import. Yes. But God God's grace is God's sufficient. Good. Yeah, but yeah. we can get such hair. Oh, you can. Okay, good. It, and it will be yours. It will be yours. If you yeah. buy something, it belongs it to you. It belongs to us. So this is mine. Yes, it's yeah. beautiful, but you've I always had God. beautiful hair. <laughs> yeah. You're so gorgeous and I your heart is so beautiful. I you know. God. And I can't wait to see what you do with your art music-wise. We yeah. are so here for it. Yeah. Just give us another one. Another, it's coming. Another it's coming. Like man. I said. Guys, like <laughs> I'm not even joking. Like that song made my morning. That song Amen. and Pitson is so passionate. You know, he's like Pitson is a gift. Does he does that guy ever get the recognition he deserves? I to? don't even think so. Because the number he of is people he's gift. written for, the number of songs he's, he's a gift. done, he's a gift. And even me, I can say, even me as a gospel artist, Pitson has been as a has been you might say everything I've done in gospel, Pitson has been a gift. He's good. He's really good, mm. and the good thing about him is that anafanyanga tu na roho moja. Yeah. Pitson is a gift, and he, may God bless him. He's yes. not, oh, sorry, Rev. Yes, Reverend. Rev, yes. yes. So, Pitson is a gift, and may mm. God just more grace to him and everything, and I love everything that he's doing. Yeah, he's yeah. good. May he receive his flowers. Also. He'll get his flowers. Uh, yes. yeah. so send our uh, Fikisha our regards. You know? I will definitely yeah. do that. But before I let you go, mm -hmm. how do you want to be remembered? What's the legacy you are looking into leaving behind? Impact. Ah, beautiful. You know, you can, um, you can sing and have beautiful songs, fill up stadiums, sell records, but how many people have you impacted? How many can say that so and so impacted my life? And again, being 43, <laughs> that is the direction I prefer to steer my life. Mm -hmm. And like I said, um, right now, even what I am doing right now, uh, there's a school that I'm coordinating, it's called School of David, where you just learn about ministry in music and even ministering and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm currently training, but wow. also there are people who are undergoing the training together. Mm -hmm. And I realized with the School of David, then you have impact that anybody who passes through that is able to go and pass it on to five other people, yeah. six other people, learn more about ministry, learn more about serving God, especially music. I always say this, it's rare to find a Bible school for music, mm. but School of David does that. Good. And even in your daily life, whatever business you're doing, how many people are you impacting? How many people's lives are you changing? Mm. Or are you just living for yourself? Mm -hmm. Music for the longest time when I was a secular artist was about me. 
my goals, what I'm doing and what I'm achieving. But I never really thought about impacting. Wow. It wasn't until I got born again yeah. that I realized that my voice is not my own. Mm. You're blessed to be a blessing. Mm. And whatever it is that you do, how can I impact someone else? Yeah. How can I impact someone else? Yes. I love that. Impact. 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 If you don't have time maybe mm. to have like a full-fledged foundation or anything, there's always someone who you can raise. Yeah. yeah. Do big things in your small spaces. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's Jackie Nyaminde right mm. there. But yes. I love that. Who else would you want to see sitting on that couch? Ha! Wahoo! Dama has. I hope Dama was kind to you. She's amazing. She was kind. She's in she, everything. Yes. 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 Madenge, mama to me so. Wahoo! You find it too yoke. You're welcome. Yes. Please. I hope she she does. Yes. I love her. I love I love those guys. Yes. The, uh, because yeah. I think there's that whole perception of, oh, they're this and that. Yes, but, but I think as we've grown older, we've realized that we've had we had similar experiences. Like I said, I was with Lady JD the other day. Yeah. We didn't only realize we have similar experiences. We realized that we like the same things. Like what I like, she likes. Yes. And um, yeah. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful space to be yes. in. You know, back in the day, yes, we we're competing, but. of course. Because and competition is nice. It's nice and it is healthy. It is healthy. Competition doesn't have to be unhealthy. Toxic. And toxic. Yes. It can be healthy. Yeah. So yes. Good. I'll add Adama Meskia. Aramini Meskia. Mm -hmm. I'll personally reach out. Yeah. Nameless Aliniaja too hanging kwa DM, but it's all right. <laughs> Me, Come on, the, ski. The, be nice. Thank you. See, like, oh, okay. Baba to me, be nice. Baba to me, be nice, you know. But anyways, I'll, I'll yeah. still follow up. But I appreciate you for coming. Thank and God. thank you for... And my... thanks for having me. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> like I said, I watch documentaries. I've been watched. I watched. Yes. Then, I watched an incident. I don't know you are going to do what. Yeah. You had an incident in Narok. Yes. Yes. The, and it even started raining. I don't know what happened. Mm. There was a lot of situation happening in Narok. Yes. That was one of my favorite episodes. Oh, you love those <laughs> ones. Ah, me. Some, sometimes people make me want to bring back Tales of One Chico, but I will. Yes. I will. I will someday when I'm in a mental space to go to do that. Sometimes people don't just realize you need yes. for me to be able to effectively bring them content that impacts i have to be okay you meant here. yes i got i can't come here. i used to wonder how you do it yeah it's not easy it's not easy because yeah. those stories will mm. impact you yeah too. so sometimes when i see comments all in ways tales of i'm like guys care for me too like i'm out here trying to be okay so the best you can do is pour into me love yeah. and support and not Same. Like, it's easy to do what the audience want you to do, but I'm in a creative space where my first thing to tell creatives is, please take care of yourself here. I'm so happy mm. that you're aware of that. Yes. I'm so happy mm -hmm. because that is the one thing I was not aware of, mm. that I need to take care of myself yeah. before I go on stage Important. to entertain. Because when you do entertain, mm -hmm. guys don't realize that it draws from you. A lot. It takes a from lot. you. A and lot. if you're not pouring in, you're not feeding yourself, you're not... Mm -hmm. it, it you'll can, crash You'll someday. crash. You'll yeah. crash, mm -hmm. you know, but I just, I just love this space. It's beautiful. And also to give you your flowers. I know you Amen. brought me flowers. I brought you flowers. Uh, but I want to give you your flowers. Yeah. I keep saying for me, when I get to interview such women who came before me, it's an honor. Yeah. It's an honor. Nice. You look at you. You look at people like you, and you're like, I have a voice now. I can use it. You know, it's easy. To be honest, it's so easy for me. Amani, I won't lie. I yes. don't want to lie to people. Oh my God, this work is so hard. Oh my God, it's stressful. <laughs> oh my God, I'm dying. I don't want to lie. It's so easy. It's a beautiful it's thing, so and easy, it's good to know? recognize something yes. for it. It's easy. You it know? doesn't but have to be hard. No, it doesn't have. To. Easy is good too, but it wouldn't be easy if women like you did not go before us Amen. you are not it you are there in the analog stages you did what you had to do and now we are learning through your lessons yes. now we are rebuilding with you guys Amen. and i can only hope this conversation impacts 
see what I did there? Yes, in it park like somewhere. Yes. No? Yes. But I want to let you go. But before I do, is there anything we left that you want to touch on? And what would be your parting shot to our people? My parting shot? <laughs> yeah, because I don't think we left anything. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> would be, ah, uh, yes, times and seasons mm -hmm. belong to God. Yes. Understand what time you are in, what season you are in, and what you need to do within that mm. time. And maximize your potential. Good. And impact lives. Impact lives. And Think prayers? Prayers. Prayer changes things. Good. I came a product of prayers. Kudos to mom. Things. Kudos to mom. Kudos to mom. Ah, <laughs> and it has also taught me to yes. pray for my child, fight for my child. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy. And she did that. Yes. Yes. Imagine if you want to TV up. I can't I can only imagine I can only imagine I can't 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 I Go ahead, go ahead. Man. Until these days, back then, my mom used to call me like every day. Where are you? What are you doing? Squeezy. Um, two days, and I'm like, wait, when I'm not important yes. anymore. But it's because she's she's now okay. she found peace. She found peace. Now she's calm. Prayer item. Okay, our parents. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it taught me to fight for my child. Mm. Yeah. Do it. Yes. You've been wonderful. I thank God. And I appreciate you taking I appreciate the time. You. I know we were like almost an hour late for this conversation, <laughs> but I appreciate your patience. I thank also. God. May God yeah. bless you. May, May God he bless go you before too. you. Amen. May he answer the prayers that you say in secret. Amen. And may your music continue impacting people. Amen. And I'm, 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 I loved the content on your YouTube channel. Amen. And I would also want my people to come and just subscribe, you know, yes, for the love please. of it so that they can also get inspired. Wakupate yeah. Amani where? Amani Gospel. Gospel. You can find me on Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook, TikTok, yes. and YouTube. And YouTube. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yes. Guys, show him Aisha. Asante Nisana. What's your take home from our wonderful guest? It's like I'm living the life of my dream. I'm, I'm just getting to host people that I've always like admired. So for me, guys, when you see me happy, it's because I knew one day this time would also come. There were moments I was so scared of these women. There were moments I keep saying I was watching them a great wall and I was just there battling my fears. Will I ever make it also? I don't know, guys. But you see what I keep telling you. There's no shame in hard work. Eventually, eventually your gift is going to make you dine with people. It's going to make you sit with people. So please, whatever it is that God has instructed you to do please do it and do it passionately you never know who you will be talking to in a couple of years for me i feel happy because i was watching them from a different world i was living a different life i was in very difficult circumstances and i just get to sit with them and have a conversation i really feel happy about that Hi, emotion scandal <laughs> i appreciate our sponsors of today's uh, show amani is wearing a bit of blue so you know we have kings developers limited always coming through and i keep saying if you are looking into owning a home i love that they have a couple of apartments and they don't just sell you high end they have medium range they have affordable housing why don't you check them out very great amenities iso certified walk into their offices at prism towers and tell them first as antenna kwa kusponsorin lakini sasa tuonesheni manyumba and also to thank the team that gets to put this work together you see me in front of the camera but i'm surrounded by so many wonderful souls in including our super producer Dama said if I never mentioned Dama is coming for hers she's standing on business she's like lean so same super producers and also the entire management at LNN for making sure that we continue impacting you na bado tuko na smile yeah so i'm gonna see you guys tomorrow at 10 am wanna share your story with me info at lnn.digital till next time bye bye